Rolling with Nat20. I'm Nat20, and we're back with more of the Occult Chronicles and Bruno, who we created at the very end of the last episode. If you want to go see all of the ins and outs of him, he's a boxer. And with his boxing, he's going to take the calm step to the side. It is a feat that can be performed in Evade Trap options. Roll one bone and then select a non revealed trick card and reveal it. If the trick card is a face card, then add two times X to your trick points taken score, where X is the number of cups rolled, and then draw a card. So, as I said when we were building this character, I really wanted to focus on defense against traps. Because traps seem to be prevalent and fucking us over. A pair of scything blades suddenly comes out of the wall. You look up to see two scything blades racing down the hallway at you. They are razor sharp and suspect that they might be able to cut you in half. And suspect... Yeah, so there's typos in the game. It's not always me. I can instinctively twist or I can duck under. Now I've chosen a more physical character, so the instinctive twist, all of that boxing will... Acting purely on instinct, attempt to twist and dodge the blades. Paraphrase. You dodge some blades. Oh man. Alright, I'm gonna perform the feat. Roll it up. Except you. It was a face. I got to draw another card. I got a thing. And I'm glad I did that, because otherwise, I would have lost. When your acrobatic maneuver comes off without a hitch, the blades pass underneath you, and then the end of their run seem to be stuck, sucked back into the wall. I get extra health and extra luck. Totally worth the courage I used. What do we get here? The weeping wall. You see a section of the wall whose plaster long ago began to peel away. However, something doesn't seem quite right. Your eyes catch the faintest glimmer of reflected light from some pattern on the wall. You can swear that you hear the faint beating of a heart. Suddenly, you realize that the wall is weeping blood. Then you feel an unspeakable evil presence try to embrace you. You struggle to maintain your composure as you feel a building desire to scream, grab a hold of you. The blood trickles down the wall and the patterns sicken you, but the real danger here is something buried within the wall. It's evil, and it's reaching out to you. You must fight to keep your sanity. Fight to keep your sanity. Knight beats page. Page beats eight. Nine beats seven. We beat horror check. Your will is stronger than the evil embedded in the wall. You fight back the building urge to scream in panic, and then relax as you master your fears. How shall we do this? Thing? The wall weeps blood in pursuit in pulsing rivulets. You can hear the faint beating sound or perhaps you were merely imagining it. It mixes with the broken plaster and the pools at the base of the wall draining slowly between the cracks in the floor. You notice a large gash that seems to be lacerated. There is something evil and malign. Malign? Pulsing within the walls. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that word. Malign? Something evil. <laughs> Some elder sorcery has left its taint here as well. You should proceed with caution. I can try to dispel it, but I'm not very good at that, or I can just leave it the fuck alone. You have a bad feeling about this. There's something about this wall that you should just probably avoid. Double leave alone. Yeah, what's in here? What's in here? Another hall? What's down this way? A locked skull door. You see a locked wooden door with a carving grin with a carved grinning ornamental skull mounted on it. The skull glares at you ominously, and you feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand at end. The skull's teeth look like they might be keys of some sort. Hmm. I can attempt to figure out the combination. Or I can bash the door in. I have a lot better chance of bashing a door in. Because I am a boxer. So I'm going to box this door. Oh no. Our draw is terrible. Alright, that beats that. Loses. Yeah. Loses. Yeah. Yeah. We fail a bashing down this door. You get a running start, but you just bounce right off. The stupid skull is still grinning at you, and it really creeps you out. Did it just get a little colder? Okay. I did use my talisman a little bit there. That's okay. I'm going to try to bash this door in again with a better draw. Queen over knight. Oh. 
much better go so far. Seven over aces, page over ten, knight over ten. We win by a lot. You batter down the door. The skull splinters into multiple pieces. You think you might actually hear it groan in a death rattle. It's probably just your imagination. The way lies open now. <coughs> That's great. Two expertise, some more fortune, and health just from bashing down this door. And it leads to a room that we've even seen before. Uh, this comes up every time we fail a cups, but has a 10% chance of leaving us. But if we up our cups more, it probably won't. We're so good at cups. Oh man, it's the Teslarati scientist. You were confronted with a creature from some type of horrible nightmare. It towers over seven feet tall and seems covered in a sickly, translucent slime. You can only describe it as a combination of a snail, cucumber, and octopus. You fight to control your revulsion. This thing is not of our world. It must be from another dimension entirely. You feel overcome with dread and a sickening revulsion. Oh no, I forgot to read the next line, and so karma always makes me fail. Your mind is weak, you feel like you're gonna vomit, and you struggle to control yourself from going to your knees and dry heaving. My brain! After the initial shock of seeing the strange creature passes, you're pretty sure that you can identify it. You remember your briefings of the Tunguska event of 1908. A portal had been opened by this interdimensional race of aliens known as the Tesla Rotti. An invasion had been foiled by a precursor to the ODD when the portal generator was overloaded. It had been a narrowly won victory. An interdimensional war had followed. This creature must be a scout sent over to re do reconnaissance. Perhaps the energy of this house served as a beacon to pull it here. It seems to be working on some sort of experiment. I can run, I can use sorcery, or I can beat it up. And I'm going to be beating up all the things. One thing that you are pretty sure of is that these things bleed. So bleed, bleed for me. Bleed. If it bleeds, we can kill it. And if we can kill it, we can get all of the points. All of the points. The creature is mortally wounded and crumples down into a gelatinous heap. Yeah, four expertise for beating up him. Now there's a brain canister. Having dispatched this foul interdimensional monstrosity, you look around and immediately recognize the thing's handiwork. It's been working on creating assistance called brain bots. On the table is a canister containing a human brain. You can't be sure if this thing is even alive anymore. The body has been obviously destroyed. It's kept alive by a network of power cables. Why this one was singled out and not pulled directly into a crab bot is a mystery. Was it being tortured or interrogated? Leave it alone or I can destroy it. I think I'll just leave it alone for now because I don't understand what its purpose is. And we'll use our bonuses to up our swords so that we can become a little more well-rounded. Move on to this hallway and see what's in this room. What is it? What is it? It's an apparition of death. We're not in a good build to be doing this thing. You see a chessboard set up for the commencement of a game. Upon closer examination, you discover that the pieces are very strange. The black ones are carved out of some volcanic rock and seem to shift between normal pieces and twisted tentacle monsters. The white pieces, carved from alabaster, depict humans armed with all manner of weapons. You could swear that you see a knight that resembles yourself. Suddenly, a chair across from the chessboard, a grim specter of death approaches. Your eyes widen in disbelief as apparition beckons you to sit and play. You must fight to keep your sanity. Sanity! We lose. Your mind is weak. The confrontation with the apparition of death sends your mind reeling. You struggle to maintain sanity. <laughs> the specter startles you. You wonder if this is some type of trick or illusion. Could this be real? You can sense the currents of sorcery at work here, but just what the sorcerer is, you cannot be certain. It beckons you to sit across from it. The apparition motions you to the board again, suggesting that you begin your game. Unlike your encounters with most other supernatural creatures, the specter of death seems to have no problem with you leaving, and you feel perfectly free to do so. A line from a poem suddenly springs to your mind, I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade. Okay, it's a weird poem, but sure. It's over here. The Teslarati Generator. You are confronted with a strange machine that seems to hiss and crackle with otherworldly energy. There's something very odd going on here. You sense that it might be dangerous to get too close. The technology reminds you vaguely 
of the photographs that you saw when you were in the first interdimensional war against the Tesslarati. This must be some portal generator, and if so, that is bad news. You remember what happened in Tungaska, 1908. You were happy to put some distance between, you and, between yourself and its strange energy, and you are pretty sure it won't be pursuing you. You need to watch out for any Tesslarati that might be nearby. Oh, man. Find a pack of ghouls. You stumble upon three figures hunching over something lying on the floor. They look up to face you. You recoil in horror as you observe their blood-covered faces. Resist the horror. These creatures have been feasting on a body, and it looks human. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, at least we mitigate a lot of it. But the mind is still weak, and we struggle to maintain. But we're okay. Ghouls! You would know these canine features and that smell anywhere. The ODD has been calling, has been called in more than once to fight ghoul infestations. Calcutta, Chicago, London, Fond du Lac, they seem to pop up everywhere. You remember the briefings. Hit them hard and they will scatter. Don't let them swarm you or get behind you. Make sure you get any wounds, especially bite wounds, treated immediately. I can run or I can fight. Uh, I'm gonna fight. It's not even a fight, but whoever said life was fair, poor ghouls. Uh, alright. Well, I can't beat the queen, but I can beat that. And I can beat that. And I can beat the ghouls. And darn, I wish I could, uh, get some more points. I got a page, but okay. You won the battle. The ghouls are no match for you. They fall where they stood, and the puddle of blood on the floor is now bigger than ever. I get some health back for that, which is cool. I think I might want to go fuss with that brain canister now that I've found the, uh... Oops. Now that I've found the portal generator. So let's destroy the brain. You should be able to detach the strange tubes and destroy the case. A quick death would be a blessing if this thing is still alive. I do not know if this will have any sort of effect. It's gonna fail on us hard. You're not very good at this. Hopefully it's not any it's not feeling any more pain. You will have to try again if you want to finish the job. I, I hurt myself in the process of trying to beat that thing up. Beating it up again. Dang. Double dang. My draws versus tricks suck. Okay, another try. Yeah, here we go. This time we're just gonna we're just gonna trounce it. Trounce it. Uh, you showed it a mercy, and no, you know that it would thank you. If it could. I got some rope and some health rope. Support item it gives me bonus to cups and I can use it once per some sort of challenge. Oh, I get another pick. There we go. Uh, so my cups, I'm just rolling in cups. I got some rope now. What can this be used for? Adds option for climb to some encounters. Excellent. Super excellent. Totally worth going back and beating that thing up. What do we got down the rest of this corridor? More corridor. But not this way. This way is a children's room. Children. Children. Uh, or a haunted guillotine in the middle of a children's playroom. That's scary. You see the outline of the distinctive shape and the gloom. It still takes you a second or two to realize exactly what it is. A guillotine. This, however, is no normal guillotine. The mountain and blade pulled up high glistens with wet blood and the bascule seems to beckon you you feel tired suddenly and then you realize that you have somehow unknowingly taken a few more steps towards the death machine you feel a wave of panic engulf you as you realize that this cruel instrument of death is slowly drawing you closer you realize that you must resist its siren's call or risk losing sanity and just possibly your head resist the horror with all of the cups i mean we're doing a cup run so all the cups the wooden metal monster has consumed hundreds of souls and you feel your last barrier of resistance begin to buckle and eat away at your sanity whatever you do don't lie down and put your head in the lynette a haunted guillotine you stand before a work of art polished wood and burnished brass fitting adorn the guillotine the craftsmanship is astonishing and the splattered blood detracts from it not at all you can also sense the arcane curse that is bound an evil spirit to the horrible contraption. How many victims have caught sight of it only to find themselves sleepwalking to their doom? I can try to beat it up, 
I can try to dispel it, or I can try to engage it in a duel. I think I might want to try to beat it up. It's possessed by an evil spirit, but it's made of wood and metal. Surely it can be destroyed. At the very least, you might be able to disable it so that it can't claim any more victims. Or my draws can be horrible. Okay. Terrible draws are not going to allow me to bust this thing up today. You fail to make much of a dent. You can feel the spirit lash out at you physically. This might hurt. That's mentally, bro. I'm out of here. I don't got the mental fortitude to be dealing with that. Oh, it's another pack of ghouls. Attack the ghouls. Why are there a bunch of ghouls this time? It's a little weird. Uh, I'm going to go for the win. And I'm glad I did because I didn't get to play I wouldn't have gotten to play the king on another face. So just win it. Fight the ghouls and win. You win the battle. The ghouls are no match for you. They fall where they stood and the puddle of blood on the floor is now bigger than ever. Get some ammo and some health. Neither of well, health is helpful. I don't really need it right this second. And I don't got anything to put the ammo in. Which kind of makes it useless. Silly. Oh, there's zombies in here. You've come face to face with the living dead. Slow, ponderous, and mindless. Ponderous and mindless? Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm not. No, no. Zombies are still not to be underestimated. They can overwhelm you with numbers and be feasting on your entrails before you know it. Despite having dispatched a few of these undead in your automatons, they still creep you out. Roll horror. Because you gonna be scared. You gonna be scared. That's okay. Zombies. You hate these guys. This place certainly knows how to keep you on your toes. Just don't build a summer home here. Alright, we're gonna fight some zombies. Just remember to aim for the head. Jeez. No. Okay, that's good so far. Better. Darn. You didn't take the advice now, did you? Don't let him bite you. Alright, battle him again. We'll try better. We'll try harder. We will succeed. We will survive. We'll win. You won the battle. The dismembered zombie bodies still twitch around on the floor, putting on quite the show giving us a little more health if only that was what we were suffering is a lot of health damage fortunately we're suffering a lot of sanity damage you know we really got a lot of options to deal with that a crossbow trap you hear the twang and look up to see a crossbow bolt heading your way aim straight at your heart combat roll your battle instincts kick in you drop to the floor and roll away roll 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 well combat roll is cool but this draw sucks that's okay though, I still managed to beat it. It's probably not by as big of a margin as I could have. Drop to the floor and roll away, avoiding the lethal bolts. More health. Alright. Halls and rooms, halls and rooms. What's this? A book on a stand. You notice a large tome set in an ornate reading pedestal. It's apparent that the book is bound in human skin, and you've seen such things in the ODD special collections. You feel a presence nearby. Yes, you are being watched, but the strongest em emanation is from the tome itself. You could swear that it is alive. Is it breathing? No, that must be your imagination. You decide to leave the tome alone. You sense that all is not as it seems here. It's probably a good choice. It's this thing, a haunted suit of armor. Your attention is drawn to an old suit of armor standing guard in a room. As you strain to make out its features, you realize something is terribly wrong. A sudden chill shoots down your spine and a sense of dread engulfs you. There is a dark sorcery involved in this and it nibbles at your sanity. So do poor rolls. Ugh. Ugh. Your mind is weak and the confrontation with the cursed suit of armor sends your mind really. You struggle to maintain sanity, but it's okay. A haunted suit of armor is animated by some sorcerous artifice. Such a curse would require great power and forbidden knowledge. Its gaze is locked on you. And you sense an intelligence of some sort. Attack, engage in psychic duel, or talk. Ooh, I like talking. You sense a keen intelligence before you. An aura of sadness permeates its very being. You also sense desire. Perhaps you can figure out what, if anything, this cursed suit of armor wants. Not on this roll. You try to make contact, but you fail. Let's talk more. Let's talk more, bud. Yeek. Damn. Stop getting such good things. Let's talk more, bud. 
We're gonna talk until you tell me all about what's going on. Now I can help you. The intelligence speaks to you. The sadness and anguish are nearly overwhelming, but you understand that it wants you to break the curse. 500 years ago, a succubotic witch stripped this knight's soul from its body, sealing it to an armor, and bound the key within a small glass bead. The bead was taken by a common thief who perished in this house 30 years ago. The haunted armor cannot use the key itself, but perhaps you can. So I'm looking for the bead somewhere in the house. I got an expertise from all that. Uh, have you found the bead? The haunted suit of armor gazes expectingly at you. Well, hopefully we can find that bead. Not enough to boost our cups even further, but that's okay. Malevolent shadows, you are surprised by a sudden flickering of shadow that spreads out all around you. You feel like you're being choked by some invisible force. Roll horror. Try not to die. Oh, man. All of these failed horrors are just wearing me down. Two creatures of shadow swirl around you. You recognize immediately that you are dealing with a type of ghostly creature that feeds off of human emotions. Fear and pain being the most succulent to the creatures. You cannot either stand firm or fight these creatures physically or run and hope to fight another day. Uh, I can dispel them or I can try to flee from them. If I try to flee from them, they'll chase me. So, despite it being the harder roll, I'm going to try to dispel them. Oy vey. Don't be the death of me. Don't be the death of me. You engage in a psychic duel to find that you cannot stand against them for long. You gasp for breath like a huge weight was sitting on your chest. This could get ugly. Battle him again. Running away is a poor option. Darn it! Okay. Okay. Battle him again. Oy vey. A knight. Okay, we win that round, thankfully. You engage in a psychic duel. You stand firm and use your talents to bottle them up in a psychic containment field, and then crush the field, pushing them into the spirit world. Basically not dying. Demon baby! Well, that must have been the last round we got the demon baby. You're startled by the rocking cradle. It seems to be moving of its own accord. The squealing of the runners on the wood is unsettling. You step closer. As you approach, you begin to suspect there is something lying inside the cradle. You peer down and behold a thing of astounding ugliness. A demon baby grins up at you and you are afraid. The eye, your eyes widen in disbelief as the demon baby coos at you in some type of demonic chant. It gnaws at your sanity. Oh. Yes. You sob. It's scary. Leave it alone. You decide to leave it alone. So that it doesn't uh, make you go completely insane. The story advances. Computer diagnostics complete. The chief alien engineer has restored the central computer system to 100% operational efficiency. Meaning? For us. You cannot spend expertise tokens. Well. That's very disappointing. Um, I'm going to continue onward for at least one more encounter because I feel like there's a good chance that we're going to go insane. You see a grizzled old man dressed in some grungy old robes. He seems aware of your presence and he waves you forward. He introduces himself as the alchemist and you notice that he is indeed surrounded by a mangere of strange equipment. You wonder what on earth he's doing here in this mansion. He doesn't seem at all disturbed that you've dropped in on him. I can knock him out, or I can talk with him. Obviously, I talk. You decide to engage the alchemist in a little conversation to try to discover what he's up to. Talking to him is gonna drive me insane. Drive me insane. You continue to make lots of small talk, but besides some pleasant smiles, he doesn't seem convinced about you. You feel like he is tossing something over in his mind. Keep talking to me. We need to figure this out. And I need to figure it out by a large enough margin to be okay. He seems to size you up and get to the heart of the matter. He wants you to help, and he's willing to help you in return. He wants you to find some papers. And... Tee-hee! Yes, young master, you will suffice, I think. I cannot leave this room because I, uh, I cannot. But I need my papers returned to me if I am to complete this great work that I have set out to finish. My legacy, you see. 
He wants you to recover some papers that are nearby. The papers are warded, so you must speak the wards of release when you find them. He can't remember exactly where. He mumbles something, warning about competitors, and then sends you on your way. And Bruno, who is on the verge of insanity, and hopefully we're able to not have him go insane, because he's pretty beastly. Uh, we're going to check out this locked door with levers in the back. You see a sealed, large door that is controlled by a station of levers. Some of the levers have bright metal handles, while others are topped with ornate carved wooden figures depicting human figures writhing in torment. I can attempt to bypass the levers, or I can figure out the pattern. I'm not very good at figuring out patterns, but perhaps bypassing it is an option. Examine the lever control panel and notice a small access hatch on its bottom side. With a little effort, you might be able to manipulate the level controls to your advantage. That being said, this is one task, so failure means probably sanity damage. It's target 11. Fairly good chance, but I think I might be better off trying to figure out something else to try to raise my sanity. Not going upstairs. The kitchen might work out. Let's hit up some dining areas. Like a kitchen room and a dining room and whatever room this is. We could beat up some alien patrols. That might help us out. You've stumbled into an armed patrol of alien troopers. They are wearing strange spacesuits that resemble the clean suits that you sometimes see in the Z-Branch technicians wearing back at the ODD HQ. These troopers are heavily armed and dangerous. Now I've already seen them, so now I can just fight them again. I don't have to do another horror check. They may have ray guns for all you know, but they don't stand a chance against one highly trained ODD agent who's an ex-boxer and gets the King of Wands in his draw and the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Cups to go over the Queen of Cups for a mega win. Mega win. Mega win. Oh, we just keep adding more. Boom! You win the battle. You take a moment to reflect on the fact that even alien life from a planet that could be across the galaxy can still be snuffed out just like that with your bare fists. You then snap out of it and begin searching their bodies. Dude. Some health, some ammo, neither of which are things I need. A pile of papers. Could this be the same pile of papers that I needed to find? Or was that maybe a different time? I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You see a bunch of papers spread out on top of a desk. Among the clutter are an assortment of old envelopes, letters, and even a few parchment papers. I can search through the papers or I can leave it alone. For one second, I'm going to leave it alone because I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, for the alchemist, I need to search the papers. That was Bruno. So we will search the papers. You think this might be a stash of papers that the strange alchemist sent you after. You should be careful to speak the release word so that the ward can't harm you. Now this is a much better chance of raising our sanity. Target three. Oh god, but our roll is terrible, or our draw is terrible. Oh no. You speak the words of release, but you can't feel the ward dissipate. How many times does this have to happen before you start paying attention to people who have important things like words of release to tell you? Do not kill me, do not kill me, do not kill me, do not kill me. No! Oh, and the ward draw drives me insane. Bruno Super Beastly is now just a mindless, insane beast of a man wandering the mansion, punching anyone in his way.